Greetings, minions. It is I, the Flaming Monocle, and I'm here with my very good friend, T-Dude. Hello. And we are again playing the 39 Steps. We're making some fantastic progress. I'd say we're about halfway through the game, almost. Judging by that list, the yeah. air. I, I think it's a really very pretty game, and uh, one that I'm very much enjoying. Doesn't require quite as much effort as the, the old uh, three stars of destiny, I'll tell you that much. So without further ado, we shall run to the hills. Well, the only thing you can fail in this game is opening a window. <laughs> pouring a skull. <laughs> or opening a door. And even then it still lets you go. Yeah. Peebleshire in Scotland. Peebleshire. Oh, another pretty landscape. The landscapes are really good in this. I sat down and took stock of my position. <laughs> I was here. I was buggered. Oh, and then it started to rain. <laughs> Feck. I, I realised that my vantage ground might be in reality a trap. There was no cover for a tomtit in those bald green places. <laughs> What's a tomtit? It's a small bird. Cool. Observations from a hill. A chance. There might be a chance on the moors to the right or left. Found. My enemies had located me, and the next thing would be a cordon round me. I didn't know what force they could command, but I was certain it would be sufficient. <laughs> if it was Scared. a gun, I'm screwed. The aeroplane had seen my bicycle, and would conclude I would try to, I, I would try to escape by road. Oh dear. So they've located him. I wouldn't be this... Like, I wouldn't... <laughs> I would be worried out of my skull. I wouldn't let the bicycle be seen from anywhere. And yet he's, like, really casual about all of this. Well, indeed. It's like, hmm, I made some casual observations and then I ditched my bike in a bog. Such a waste. Is that really necessary? I mean, what the heck? You know? At least he knows which bog... Then I climbed to a knoll, which gave me a view of the two valleys. At other times, I would have liked to keep. Uh, at other times, I would have liked the place, but now it seemed to suffocate me. The free moorlands were prison walls, and the keen hill air was the breath of a dungeon. Ooh, a dungeon, you say? <laughs> 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 I no. tossed a coin. Heads right, tails left. He's going samurai about this, really, isn't he? George V. God rest his soul. <laughs> and the answer was... House. <laughs> I built a small house. So I broke in and looked for the liquor cabinet. Then I found the road van. Driving in the road van. Sorry. <clears throat> Good day to you. He looked at me with a fishy eye. Confound the day I ever left the herding. There I was, my own maester. Now I'm a slave to the government, tethered to the roadside. We see it in and a back like a suckle. Oh. Well, hello to you too. <laughs> the That's just how you say good morning every day, you know. The plight of the road mender was a difficult one. Breaking up stones and laying them across miles of Scottish tracks was a tough job indeed. Having driven in Scotland, I can tell you that they didn't do a very good job either. He was a wild figure, <laughs> about my size but much bent, with a week's beard on his chin and a big pair of horn spectacles. So I'm glad I read that right. He was a wild figure about my beard, much bent with a week's beard on his eye spectacles and a horned chin. <laughs> He was the devil on the road. Oh, mercy, when my head's bursting. I can't do it. The surveyor man just report me. I'm for my bed. What is your trouble, may I ask? The trouble is that I'm no sober. Last night my daughter Merrin was wadded, and the dance still fur on the byre. Me and some other chills sat down to the drinking, and here I am. 
Petey that I ever look at on the wine when this was red. Sleep sounds like your best bet. Mm, it's easy speaking. But I got a postcard yestreen saying that the new road surveyor would be running the day. But yeah, I think Hannah steals me. this guy's I clothes as well. I was going to say, I can tell it's definitely way, ending up like, here, have a sovereign, let me have your clothes. Oh, I'll walk back to my bed and see him no wheel. But I do it, that'll no help me. For they can my kind of no wheelness. Then I had an inspiration. He just sizes up blokes and just takes their clothes. <laughs> Where's your I house? want your clothes. I was directed by the wavering finger to the cottage by the stream. Well, back to your bed and sleep in peace. I'll take on your job for a bit and see the surveyor. He stared at me blankly, then, as the notion dawned on his fuddled brain, his face broke into the vacant drunkard's smile. Eh? Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> You're the Oh! It'll be easy enough managed. I've finished that bang of stains, so you needn't chop any mail for noon. Just take the barry and wheel enough metal for your own quarry down the road to make another bang the morn. My name's Alexander Turnbull, and I've been seven years at the trade and twenty or four that herdin and leithin water. My friends call me Aki, and Wales Specky for I wear glasses in wake of the sicht. Just you speak the surveyor fair and calm, sir, and you'll be fell pleased. I'll be back uh, midday. <laughs> Collected the <laughs> road, man. I borrowed his spectacles and filthy old hat, stripped off coat, waistcoat and collar, and gave him them to carry home. I borrowed, too, the foul stump of a clay pipe as an extra property. He indicated my simple tasks, and without more ado, set off at an amble, bad, <laughs> at an amble bedwards. <laughs> then I set to work to dress for the part. I opened the colour of my shirt. It was a vulgar blue and white check such as a ploughman wear, and revealed, and revealed a neck as brown as any tinker's. I rubbed a good deal of dirt also into the sunburn of my cheeks. My boots did not satisfy me, but by dint of kicking among the stones I reduced them to a granite-like surface which marks a roadman's footgear. I broke one of the boot laces and retied it in a clumsy knot, and loosed the other so that my thick grey socks bulged over the uppers. This guy does really well. So much attention to detail, and yet he's silly enough just to leave his bike in mid... In the bog. Like, <laughs> I bit and scraped my fingernails till the edges were all cracked and uneven. The men I was matched against would miss no detail. I rolled up my sleeves, and there was a forearm which might have been a blacksmith's, sunburnt and rough with old scars. A roadman's eyes would no doubt be a little inflamed, so I contrived to get some dust in both of mine, and by dint of vigorous rubbing produced a bleary effect. My God, he's going for all of it. Indeed. <laughs> the sandwiches Sir Harry had given me had gone off with my coat, but the roadman's lunch, tied up in a red handkerchief, was at my disposal. I did the bundle again and put the paper conspicuously beside it. On I went, trundling my loads of stone with the heavy step of the professional. Soon I grew warm, and the dust on my face changed into solid and abiding grit. Oh, then the car pulled up. Better be worth it. Better show off all of these details. Are you Alexander Turnbull? I am the new County Road Surveyor. You live at Black Hawk Foot and have charge of the section from Laidlaw Byers to the Rigs. Good. A fair bit of road, Turnbull, and not badly engineered. A little soft about a mile off and the edges want cleaning. See, you look after that. Good morning. You'll know me the next time you see me. Fine. Didn't have to say a word. Clearly my get-up was good enough for the dreaded surveyor. <laughs> what? Already? My word. Hey ho. One episode, one chapter. There we go. That's the rule. Yes. And I'm afraid That is the rule. <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to have to wait until next time we play the thirty nine steps to see what happens. What make you of that one, T dude? Well, he's not skimping in any ways to detail. I mean he really went to town on his costume there, but again, he needs to he seems a little bit um how should we say, inconsistent with how seriously he's taking this uh, fugitive nonsense. <laughs> he just, you know, just takes it all in his stride. And I think that's the sort of mark of the, you know, the young English sort of travelling type, like the Phileas Fogg style 
I'd, I'd be petrified. I'd be, I'd, I'd be living in the bog, occasionally poking my head out to see if there's any spy planes. But no, nah, he's he's rocking on with it. <laughs> Surviving off the bugs and yes, <laughs> and the trench foot and the oh. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're going to call it there and don't the very next time we play The 39 Steps. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Ta-da. Bye.